Hi everyone, my name is Victoria Fernandez and welcome to my channel, I live to inspire mental health. If you're already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I post weekly videos about mental health and my experience with bipolar disorder. And if you're not subscribed, please, please subscribe. My goal is to get to 800 subscribers by the end of the year. Tell your friends, send it to somebody who actually needs to watch these videos and will find them helpful. Um, that would really help me and if you like this video and everything. Um, so. This week's video is going to be about my experience with irritation because of my bipolar disorder and kind of how it impacted my family and myself and important things that you could do to make it better. Um, before we do start, I do want to say that I have playlists made for you guys to find videos in an easier way um, by specific things that you're looking for, such as bipolar videos or videos about my experience with Google. Uh, furthermore, in my very first video, I have, it has come to my attention that a lot of comments have been, especially in my Spanish video, but about the fact that I didn't explain very well the difference between my bipolar disorder and my OCD. And that is very important. In my first video, it was, I mean, the first time I filmed myself talking like that. It was really hard to film it. Um, I was not very experienced, so I didn't make that clear. Um, but I do have OCD and I do have bipolar disorder. They're two different things. My compulsive thoughts are one thing. My mood swings were another thing. So that's, there's a big difference. I've made several videos uh, since then about the OCD, the compulsive thoughts, and how that's different, but I did want to clear that up if you have ever watched my first video and were kind of confused by that. So, furthermore, this video is going to be about my experience with irritation. This is not necessarily an easy video because it's kind of the ugly side of all this. It's the ugly side of all these feelings, the way that I treated people, the way that I was, the hatred that I felt for the world for at some point. Um, and basically, you know, there was like moments in that in that area um, you know I was 17 16 18 and I was just going through so much there were so many feelings and I did things that I'm not very proud of in the way that I treated my family the way I treated my sister um, but it was something that in that moment I felt like I couldn't control so how did this irritation come along so basically one of the things that happened very often is that at that time I was very um, angry at the world for so many things that were going on you know whether you have racism or you know you have all these different problems around the world against people with disabilities and the thing is that i would obsessively get attached to all these social causes which is great to support but at the same time it was hurting my mental health because i was getting drowned by this and whenever somebody would say something um, about those things in a negative light, I would get so angry, rightfully so, but in a way that it was affecting my mental health, in a way that it was like feeling of, like I couldn't control, I was so irritated by it that I would just start crying, I couldn't hold myself to not, you know, react in some way, and that was very unhealthy because it was not the right way to approach situations, but I had so many feelings inside of me, whether that was anger or you know sadness and I didn't know how to express them so when somebody would talk touch a certain button or like talk about something controversial or something that I felt very passionate about especially at that moment with the best buddies with the kids with disabilities it would just crumble me when I say crumble me is that I would get angry and I would start crying out of anger and it was very frustrating and I know it was very frustrating for my parents as well and you know I guess this part is really hard to talk about, but I have a little sister and she's a lot younger than me, but when I was going through this stuff, I was a teenager. She was basically a baby, not a baby, but she was like a toddler. And I was not the nicest person to her. I wanted to be by myself all the time. I didn't want anyone to come in my room. I didn't want to, you know, be there as a big sister. I was just angry at the world. And so I wasn't the nicest person to her either. I kicked her out of my room all the time. I just didn't want to spend time with her. And that has changed definitely since I've been okay. But at that point in my life, I, I was just so filled with emotions that I wasn't the best version of myself. And you know, that comes with a lot of things too, because it comes with guilt. I felt so guilty that I couldn't be a good big sister. I felt so guilty of those things. And I was afraid that she would resent me when she grew older. But now I'm happy that we have a good relationship. I'm happy that those things have changed. But it wasn't good and even with my parents there was times that I would get so irritated that those feelings would come out of control where I would be like I hate you like all this stuff and 
I'm not the type of person that would say that. I know there's some people who are just like, you know, throw that word out there lightly and I wasn't one of them. So for me to say that, it was just me filled with so much anger. And that was terrible to the fact that I actually don't remember this. My mom told me about this, but I wanted to run out of my house and there was one point that I got so mad that I literally started running towards the door and my mom was holding on to me so I wouldn't leave, like literally my body. And you know, the fact that I don't remember that, I feel like that tells you a little bit about the brain, how you don't want to remember some of the traumatic stuff that happens. And I just wanted to leave and I was yelling and I would just, it, it wasn't my best time, it wasn't. And it was hard, it was hard trying to live in a world where I felt so angry. And even at my friends, like whenever, you know, they would say certain things, touch certain sub subjects, I would become so angry and it would just it would start as anger but my anger would turn into crying and crying and crying and then a lot of like suicidal thoughts this and that I'm not worthy everybody hates me like all these kind of things and it was so much to deal with um, and you know it, it's hard, it was hard to think that at some point I wasn't gonna feel all these feelings and it was frustrating but it did change once I got stable. I realized that it was my mental illness and I had to, with therapy, understand that those things weren't necessarily my fault. That those things were in my head, that they were making me act a certain way, just like it makes you feel depressed or just like it makes you have manic episodes. It, it was making me act this way and it was really hard. But the important thing is that it is possible to overcome those situations. It is possible to know that. And it's important to know that that's not you. That in those moments, you're not yourself. You is very, like, it's tucked very much inside of you. Um, but the real you, I guess. But all these things, this, this problem that we have in our heads can make us be a terrible person to the people we love. And it sucks. It really does. So another thing that happened was that my parents, rightfully so, took away my car. I was not okay. I was definitely not okay to drive, but I thought I was. You know, I was a teenager, and to me, that was a terrible thing. That's the worst thing that you can do to a teenager, take away their car. So um, I started like crying like I was a little baby. I was, I was so angry. I was saying these awful things, terrible things to them. And it was so hard, like going through that, thinking in my head that I was okay, but I really, really wasn't. Like I should have not been driving in that state because even though I thought that I couldn't hurt myself or I would never hurt myself or I wouldn't hurt other people, emotions are emotions and we, when we don't have any control over it, it can be really hard. Also, um, we had a dog, her name, was, her name was Julia. She passed away a few years ago, but throughout that time, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't capable of loving so much. You know what I mean? Like I was different than who I am today. And I felt angry at the world. I, I wanted to be by myself. All I wanted to do was be alone. I, I didn't want to be with anyone, not even my dog. And that's like something that's hard to like think about because you know, it's like, who doesn't love dogs? And with me, it's not that I didn't love dogs, not that I didn't love her. It's just that I wanted to be by myself. And the worst part is that at this point, sometimes I don't remember a lot of memories with, with Juliet. And that's really hard to think about as well because it's like, you know, she was with us for like several years and um, it's just hard. But again, sometimes when you're going through your toughest times, you, you just don't want to remember those things for some reason um, because you're trying to protect yourself or your brain's trying to protect itself. At least that's what I think. Um, but it was it was definitely... I was definitely not who I am today and I was not in a place where I was with open arms accepting love from other people and I definitely did not like myself either. I would get irritated about my weight, my hair, like all this stuff, insecurities that I had and you know that combined with being a high schooler, that combined with being a teenager, all this social stuff, all this pressure and it was just so hard, it was so hard to just deal with everything and so for that I felt like I hated the world and there was something wrong with everything and obviously when I got better my perspective changed 
I realized that there's so good, much good in the world and if you can't find it, be the good in the world, make a difference and that you, you, know, you, can't, be, you can't support every single cost to 100%. You can support them but I think you can't drain yourself, your mental health by kind of falling into every single thing that's wrong in the world because if then you, just, you wouldn't be able to ever be happy. Um, so that's where I think that for mental health it's important to choose a few things. To support other things, of course, but to choose these few things that you feel really passionate about and to allow yourself to, you know, live life. Nothing's ever perfect, but, you know, you fight for what you really feel passionate about. You help other people and then you support others, but you have to put your mental health above things sometimes. And I was drowning myself in problems of everybody, of everything. And even with my friends, when they went through things, I would drown myself in their problems and they weren't even something that was specifically mine. So with time I learned about that. I learned that, you know, mental health is what I want to focus on. Mental health is, is what I feel the most passionate about. And um, that's where I am today. So I don't see the world as a terrible thing. There are terrible things, there are terrible people, but there's also a lot of good. And I hope that I'm being able to do some good for the world. Um, so that's what I wanted to share. I also, I mean, there's also obviously the side to like, okay, so what do we do? Like we're feeling all these things. I think there's two things that I did that I would have, I, if I could go back to myself, I would tell myself to do it more, not to, you know, wait until I was better. But one of the things is talking to the people that are surrounding you your parents, your siblings, or your, your family, your friends say, hey, this topic triggers me. Let's not talk about that. Don't bring it up. Don't talk about politics with me because it's going to make me irritated. It's going to make me have all these feelings and I can't control them right now. I don't have like the ability to do that really well right now. That, that's, that's important because you prevent yourself from falling into this feeling of irritation over and over and over again who, that just does harm to your mental health. At least until you feel better, until you've learned coping mechanisms, until you've learned how to deal with those situations. And that's where it comes to my second one, which is going to the psychologist and talking about these things because you feel irritated and all these feelings that you have with your mental illness, they're kind of, they're exaggerations of maybe thoughts that you have. For example, I didn't like my hair. I didn't like my weight. That was an issue that I had and it's an insecurity that so many people have. It's not something that's uncommon, but it was made worse by my mental illness. It was made worse to where I had the thoughts that I hate myself and all that kind of stuff that I don't want to live anymore and all that. When, you know, most people don't have those thoughts because they don't like something about themselves. Um, so working on that with my psychologist was really helpful because it was understanding the root of those problems and understanding the issues and why that's happening and how to manage it. So that's the huge importance of finding help, of talking to somebody and talking about all these problems, why you feel irritated, why does that trigger you? And then finding those solutions and little by little you'll get better, especially with help and you know, if you need medications with the right medications, with the right doctor, um, life does get better. Trust me, it does. <laughs> so with that, I hope you really liked this video. And if you did, please support me by liking this video, commenting, subscribing, uh, sharing it with somebody who you believe should watch this video. And always remember that there's a lot of you on the tunnel and a bad day does not mean a bad life. Mm -hmm.